Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to Sprocket Sanctuary. Just as I clicked go live, Sprocket decided to sit down and then lay down. I would have seen her up and active and, you know, she really does move. <laughs> but it's a dull, dreary day here in the Sunshine City. It started off okay, but, well, you know, April showers, oh, May, May flowers now, but I don't know. We're 2nd of May. Hopefully, 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 we will have beautiful flowers popping up in the lawn before we know it with all this wonderful, soft, gentle rain that we're receiving. I just want to say thank you to everyone for logging in and joining us this morning, or if you're joining us later in the day or the week, thanks for, thanks for tuning in. It's always wonderful to have you join us here at Sprocket Sanctuary. So, a new month. And I've decided that I should pick up where our friend Barb uh, let, stopped, up, stopped off in, in Baysville. And I was doing this at Knox as well for a while. And wishing all the May birthdays uh, uh, a very happy day. So let's just run through the, the names of our, our May birthdays. So Matthew G, Wendy, Cindy R, Wendy uh, T, Lynn L, Kathleen, Diane, Janet, Lynn R, Daniel R, all of our May birthdays that I know of for this month. If you have a birthday this month, let me know and I'll put you down on the list and uh, we'll go from there. But I hope you have a wonderful day when your day arrives and uh, have, a, have, a, have a wonderful celebration of, of your day of birth. I also want to give a shout out to Nancy and Michael for once again uh, sharing with us three beautiful pieces of music today. You get a chance to move over, go over to our video section and have a listen. They, they're very uplifting and will, and will make bring a smile to your face. Well, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. For thousands of years, Indigenous people have walked in this land on their own country. Their relationship with the land is at the center of their lives. We acknowledge the Chippewa, Iroquois, and Algonquin people, past, present, and their emerging leaders for their stewardship of this land throughout the ages. Let us now move to our call to worship. As we gather, may our ears be open to receive holy dialogue. And as we pause from our busy lives, may our words be inspired in holy dialogue. And as we seek God's wisdom, May God interve interweave our presence and words to create holy dialogue. In this time of worship, let us engage in holy dialogue as children of God seeking to learn, seeking to teach, seeking to be one. Let us pray. Fine grower, during this time of worship, we come to grow and learn. You offer us life, nourish us, and create a space to thrive. May our words draw us closer to you, shape and form our hearts and minds as we hear your word, sing your praises, and seek your guidance through prayer. Strengthen us to bear good fruit today and in the days to come. In the name of the one who proclaims, I am the vine. As we pray together, say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Well, we're moving now to our scripture reading for today. At some point this week, I invite you to read Psalm 22. But our scripture reading uh, that I'm sharing with you this morning comes from the book of John, chapter 15, verses 1 through 8. Jesus, the real vine. I am the real vine, and my father is the gardener. He breaks off every branch in me that does not bear fruit, and he prunes every branch that does not bear fruit, so that it will be clean and bear more fruit. You have been made clean already by the teachings I have given you. Remain united to me, and I will remain united to you. A branch cannot bear fruit by itself. It can do so only if it remains in the vine. 
In the same way, you cannot bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who remain in me and I in them will bear much fruit, for you can do nothing without me. Those who, not, who do not remain in me are thrown out like a branch and dry up, such as branches are gathered up and thrown into the fire, where they are burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, then you will ask for anything you wish, and you shall have it. My Father's glory is shown by your bearing much fruit, and in this way you become my disciples. Well, may the Spirit bless us with wisdom and wonder as we ponder the meaning of these words for our lives. Our Young at Heart time is entitled, A Growing Community. Jesus' followers and friends were uncertain about their safety. Some had returned to their homes, but others had stayed in Jerusalem. And they gathered together often and, and talked a lot about Jesus. Jesus was so gentle, said someone from the corner of the room. When he told stories to the children, you could see the love in his eyes. From the other side of the room, someone else spoke. Oh yes, his touch was enough to heal and to bring great joy. The person had been blind since birth could see people for the first time. And then Peter spoke up. My mother-in-law was healed by Jesus too. In the early days, Jesus' way of healing and teaching has brought us together. We are connected through Jesus. You are right, came from someone at the table. Jesus told us that would happen when we talked about the vine and the branches. Jesus said, I am the vine, God is the gardener. In the vineyard full of grapevines, the gardener carefully cuts the branches so that they will grow lots of grapes. That has already happened to my branches because I have taught you God's word. When a branch is broken from the vine, that branch cannot produce grapes. Stay connected to me, just as the branches are connected to the vine. Then you will always produce good works because we are joined together. Yes, I am the vine and you are the branches. Stay connected to my teachings and to me so that they become a part of you. Pray for what you need. God is pleased when we produce good work. And as the people looked around the room, they knew that they were each connected to Jesus, and they were connected through him to one another, a growing community, just as we are this very day. Let us pray. Vine, vine grower, we give thanks for your perfect love. Please accept the offerings of our good fruit. Form us and reshape us so that we may bear more fruit, and in doing so, glorify you. Amen. Well, when we trust God, when we abide in God, the love of God revealed in Jesus bears much fruit in us and our relationship with God and one another. Meetings become holy encounters when we meet others with a spirit of love, mutuality, and interdependence. Our reading for today brings to mind the question, then how should we live as Christians? But not only that, but we should also ask ourselves, how do we, how do we tell the story of Jesus? And I guess the easiest answer to both of those questions is love. We have all heard that God is love, and there are so many other verses that repeat that same sentiment throughout our scriptures. In our story from John today, we are invited to see the declaration of connectedness in the likeness of vine and branches, and the call to accept and live within that connectedness. We also find ourselves today hearing another I am statement from Jesus. Last week, we read about Jesus saying, I am the good shepherd. Today, we hear yet another metaphor. I am the true vine. And like any good metaphor, we are invited into a host of interpretations and layer upon layers of meaning. 
This story metaphor of the vine and branches is one that everyone can associate with. We, along with our ancestors, have all heard of, if not even done some ourselves, done some pruning in our lifetime. But we need to be mindful in interpreting this metaphor of the role in which we place ourselves. As a vine grower, your identity is clear. As the vine grower, it is your role to examine individually and communally the condition of your vineyard. Then taking all that you have found into consideration, you need to figure out just how you're going to improve on your vineyard's health. However, we are not invited to call upon the metaphor in ways that perpetrate harm or oppression under the guise of cutting, cutting off an, an unproductive brain. The other aspect of this text that we should take a look at is the reoccurrence of abiding. This abiding is thick with significance. It is to be secure, deeply attached, close, loyal, and continue in a particular state or action. It conveys mutuality, togetherness over individualism, interdependence. And this interdependence with the vine grower promises to be a relationship that will continually shape, form, and reform us. Life and love are not static, nor are we as individuals or as a family or a church community. We must be able to love and live, to grow, to bend, to allow for pruning and for change. If we become static and unbending, then we start to fade as the world moves on around us. For all of you gardeners out there, you know that your role is a laborious one. You know what it takes. You know that it takes wisdom patience, and an understanding of how to cultivate growth. And you know that pruning is not meant to hurt the plant. It's meant to eliminate from the plant the things that keep it from growing to its full capacity. Our Christian walk should remember these vital truths. Pruning and growth are not meant to hurt us either. It helps us to, to purge those things that keep us from growing and, and, to, and stopping us from reaching our full potential. It helps us to disconnect from those things that lull us into a sense of complacency, that negative self-talk that we sometimes sink into. It's about cutting off our fears, our doubts and disbelief, so that we are really able to grow and walk upright without fear, as we move and grow in our faith. I don't know about you, but lately, I feel like I've been floating around in limbo. I take that stay at home in your bubble request very seriously. But COVID has put many of us into a state of dormancy. And dormancy occurs when we are in situations where it seems that everything has stopped. We are slowly moving through life, but find ourselves up against closed doors. We're not able to see our friends, and perhaps that has caused part, caused part of your support network to, to fall away. You feel like you're alone, but you're not. You're not. Our spirits wither when we lose our connection to the God of our understanding, but there is hope. Like the gardener in our story today, we need to do what we need to do to stay healthy. We cannot let ourselves wither on the vine of life. And one of those ways is to abide in God's love. Abiding in God's love is thick with significance. It is to be secure, to be deeply attached, close and loyal. And we need to continue our faith walk in a state of action. I was over visiting my mum bubble with my mask on the other day. I noticed that one of her plants was quite wilted in the afternoon sunshine. So I took it to the tap and gave it a good drink. 
And by the time I left for home, that plant had started to perk up and was looking somewhat better. And you know, the same thing can happen to us. In our faith walk, God can help resurrect our wilted places. For all those wonderful parts of our lives that we thought were gone, our faith can make them thrive again. Let's reconnect. Let's abide with God in the confusion and the chaos of our day-to-day -day life. Let's be open to the changes that life is throwing at us right now with our heads high and our hearts open. And let's listen and trust in the master gardener because really perhaps all we just need is a little pruning. Amen. Our minute for mission this morning is called being born with light skin is dangerous. When Aiko Ponawasa Iro was five years old, she couldn't walk down the street without being taunted for having albinoism, a genetic condition that results in lack of pigmentation in skin, eyes, and hair. Children would taunt her with rude songs and pull her hair. And when she told the teachers that she couldn't see well, a condition common for people like Iro, they accused her of lying. Today, Iro is a lawyer and she advocates for people who are albino. In 2015, the United Nations appointed her as the first independent expert on the subject. Iro's priority is to end brutal attacks against people with albinism. More than 600 attacks have taken place in 26 African countries since 2007. Two thirds of the victims are children. Being born with light skin is particularly dangerous in Tanzania, where one in 1,400 people have albinism. Few of these people live beyond the age of 40, not only because of the high rates of cancer, but also because of belief systems. Some belief systems portray people with albinism as magical. And as a result, there is a lucrative trade in their body parts, which are believed to hold special power. The COVID-19 pandemic has made the situation even worse because people can't get to medical appointments or purchase sunscreen. In some communities, people with albinism are blamed for the outbreak of the pandemic. That's why our generosity through mission and service is supporting the Morogo Women's Trading Center to host seminars for young Tanzanian women with albinism. Topics like disability rights, legal protection, and entrepreneurship will be covered. The seminars are really important because they will not only provide training and give women a greater sense of their own rights, but also an opportunity to share experiences and talk about how their condition and the stigma around it affects them. Your mission and service gifts support a variety of critical seminars like the Morogo ones around the world. Thank you so much. Through mission and service, your generosity addresses prejudice and violence and helps to change lives. Well, my friends, I thank you for the donations that you make to our churches through PAR, through your individual donations to our treasurers, from using the donation button on the Bethune Facebook page. But if you would wish to make a donation to either Knox United or to Bethune United Church, please don't hesitate to be in touch with me and I will put you in touch with the right people for that donation to be made. And for those of you who are reaching out and doing what you can for our church communities, through phone calls, emails, letters, postcards, just anything that you can do. Thank you so much for being such an integral, integral part of our church community. Let us pray. Generous giver of life, we bring before you now the fruits of our lives. In celebration and thankfulness for all we are given, we now give back to further your kingdom. May these fruits meet the basic needs of those in our community, and may they nourish and strengthen our community and be used to grow bigger gardens to free your children yet to come. You are the vine and we are the branches. Connected in love, may we share all that we have in your holy name.
Well, we move now to our prayers of the people. Thank you to everyone who have sent me text messages and emails asking for your loved ones to be placed on my prayer list. Please know that they are there and that I continue to pray for those of you have, who have been in hospital or who have had surgery for healing and health for you all. So again, if you would like to have someone added to my prayer list, please don't hesitate to get in touch with me and I will do it. And I will add your family and friends to my list. So let us pray. In times of sadness, loss, and disorientation, we pray, Holy One, that you would abide in us. In times of anger, betrayal, and slander, we pray, Holy One, that you would abide in us. In times of hopelessness, brokenness, and failure, we pray, Holy One, that you would abide in us. In times of hope, hope, hopelessness, <clears throat> renewed faith, and assurance of the good yet to come, we pray, Holy One, that you would abide in us. In times of forgiveness, happiness, and thankfulness, we pray, Holy One, that you would abide in us. In times of joy, unity, and peace, we pray, Holy One, that you would abide in us. Your love, O God, is ever present in our times of deepest despair, as well as through the vastness of our praise. Your invitation to abide in you has no qualification, but promises to be ever close and ever present when life is at its best, at its worst, and at every time in between. Abide in us, Holy One, as we abide in you. Amen. Well, my friends, let us love one another because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Go in peace and to love and to serve. Reach out in love and bear the good fruit that is uniquely yours by the love of God. Amen. Well, may you have a wonderful week, my friends. Watch for the blog on Wednesday. It will be coming your way. It's a surprise topic. I hope that you will enjoy. And uh, enjoy the enjoy the soft spring rains as they fall upon us. Have a great week. Heads high, hearts open, masks on. Take care, my friends. God bless.